I'm Shalane from TSE Tuition. I know this is, it's been a long time since I've made a video. There's been a lot of things happening for everybody in the world over the last three years and it's still happening. And there's been a lot of changes in the tutoring industry as well. So I just haven't really made any real effort to get back into the videos but you know what we're getting a new study design uh, this year for year 11s and then next year for year 12s uh, for English EAL and literature and then in 2024 we're going to get a new study design for English language so I figured this is a really great time to jump back into making videos uh, for everybody that I hope will be useful. So today I wanted to talk about the new um, area of study for Year 11's uh, English and EAL students and that is the personal response to text. I think it's helpful to start by thinking about the distinction between a text response and a personal response as laid out by Vicar in the study design. So let's think about the text response for a second, right, the classic you know, three body paragraphs, respond to a do you agree or discuss kind of prompt, right? When we think about those essays, what teachers are looking for is your in-depth understanding and analysis of the themes and characters and ideas that are present in the text. So in a text response, your teacher's looking for you know, evidence that you, the student, know what is going on in the text, that you are able to pull out ideas from the text and then analyze them and analyze the ways in which the creator of the text has used the mechanics of their chosen genre. So whether that is uh, literary devices, if it's, um, if it's a book or if it's poetic devices, if it's poetry or cinematic devices, if you're analyzing a film, mix it, you know all of those things. So your teacher's looking for evidence that you can pull apart, right, and break apart, deconstruct um, the what the author or the, what the creator of the text is trying to do in that text and, you know, you need to sort of make evaluations on that. Now, let's think about the personal text response. All of the things that I've just said are still applicable with the added uh, part of your personal connection to that text. So the personal response is not so much um, whether or not you liked it or you didn't like it, but it's more drawing parallels between what you've seen and heard and lived right in your life and what you see in the text. So we're really looking for connections, right, between what is happening in the text. So are we looking at themes like love, loss, grief, um, anger, et cetera, et cetera, change, transformation, you know, all these classic themes that we see in um, VC texts, right? So those ideas in the text, and then how are you, the student, able to personally connect with that? So we wanna see evidence well, maybe not evidence, but we, we, we want to see explorations, right, of you trying to connect with that text. So let's say the theme is grief, for example, right? You're studying a text, it's all about grief and people's responses to grief and how grief changes them, how they get over grief, right? It's all about grief, the text that you're studying. And so the teachers are really expecting you to make a connection with that. So we want to see you talk about you know, maybe your personal experience of grief, right? Maybe you've lost a pet that's impacted you greatly. Maybe you've lost a grandparent, you know, or maybe your best friend has moved away um, at some point um, and now they're very far away and you went through a process of grief. So we want to see you apply those ideas in your life and make those connections. Now, let's say you haven't right had that experience of grief you've lived a very fortunate life where all of your grandparents are still here all of your best friends are still here all of your pets are still here right so let's say you know like you haven't experienced that you haven't had that lived experience so to speak so what could you do then well we could maybe draw upon your understanding of grief um, you know, based on what you've seen in other people. So maybe your best friend lost a, grand, uh, a grandparent, or maybe, um, you know, maybe your mum had 
um, a beloved pet in her childhood that she still thinks about. So you want to um, make as personal a connection as we can. So it doesn't have to necessarily happen to you per se, particularly if we're talking about, you know, things like racism. Um, some people are just really fortunate to not have had that experience of racism or prejudice. And, you know, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's just, you know, some people just live lives like that. And that's not necessarily your fault. But I don't think it's true that just because you haven't lived it, does you don't have um, an understanding of that idea in your life because inevitably you will have maybe seen other people experience racism or heard about people experiencing racism or read about it in the papers, um, you know, things like that. We do live in a multicultural society. so it's pretty it should be pretty easy for you to make those personal connections uh, to those ideas now what form will this take it's debatable because we haven't seen in our experience yet um, what is a really common form uh, that schools are asking their students to uh, demonstrate these skills in but i would assume that it is a slightly more casual tone text essay. So we still want to aim for academic language. We still want to aim for, you know, fairly formal language as much as we can. We still want to be quoting. We still want to be analyzing quotes. But when it gets to that personal response bit where you talk about what you've seen, what you lived, what you've heard, et cetera, et cetera, that is where the tone I expect can sort of uh, decrease or lower informality just a little bit um, because it is very hard to talk about what you've experienced in super formal language you kind of end up sounding like royalty you know one has lived um, which we don't want to do it sounds very contrived and it's a very stilted way of expression but that's kind of what um, I would expect and what I would assume schools to ask their students to do. Now, of course, if your school has given you instructions in terms of, you know, what it needs to look like, what it needs to sound like, then go ahead and follow your school's instructions um, and perhaps work with your tutor or work with your teacher uh, more closely on that expression if you're not sure about it. So I hope that was helpful. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up and follow our social media so that you can get more content like this. We also have a new uh, newsletter that we send out to parents and tutors who are looking for more support in supporting their English students. So sign up to our mailing list if that's what you're looking for. Our next video is going to be about crafting and creating texts, an uh, area of study uh, that will be present in year 11 and year 12 of the new study design. So make sure you sign up to our channels so that you can get that content when it drops. And as always, if you're looking for one-to-one -one tutoring, please contact us and let's have a chat about how we can support you. Thanks for watching.